We believe that God has something for you. You have to believe that, amen? Do you believe that you're in the right place at the right time? God's got the right word, amen? If I can get it out, I'm stalling. God is faithful, amen? I, uh, I was doing some work on my property I have across town. And this message kind of helps along this line, so just bear with me for a second. But I was doing some work out there, and I was with my tractor. And already I'm labeled pastor of disaster because I can do some damage with a tractor. Amen. Yeah. Quit laughing on the second row. <laughs> and so there's some trees that are dead. And they need pushed down. Amen. And I got a tractor, dead gun. I can push him down. But watch out for the power lines, amen. <laughs> so I pushed a tree down and it landed on the power line, and three of the neighbors got without power for about five hours. So I was really, really popular there for a while, amen. I'm sure my name was used in vain a few times. But that's okay because a message comes out of that, amen. God uses everything. I wish I could take credit for this, but I can't. I, I heard a guy say something, and he was talking to this tree biologist. And this tree biologist began to explain to him some things about trees. And while he's explaining those things about trees, I'm telling you, this guy, who I don't even know was saved, was given a message. And so I took that, and I went back, and I started searching, researching, and some things, and looking to make sure what he was telling me was true. And I started kind of comparing it to some things in the scripture, and I realized that he did give me a message. So that being said, let me give you the message, amen? If we read over in the book of Psalms, we find David in Psalms 104, verse 16. And I'm just going to read the first part of that because that's all we need to hear. This is what he said. Can, can we do something, Craig? Craig, can you help him out with that? I don't know why every time I look down, I get this popping. I don't know if there's something we can do to pull that out or whatever. If you can, I appreciate it. Psalms 104, verse 16. David's speaking here, and this is what he says. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. Now, those trees were dead. They didn't have any sap left in them. Amen? Because I'll fix to tell you about sap in just a moment. But the trees of the Lord are full of sap. Now, first thing I'll do, I want to establish that he's talking to us. Because in the scripture, several times he references us as trees. Okay? In the very beginning of Psalms, this is what he says. I'm going to read all of this. He says, Blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's us. Amen? Amen? That brings forth its fruit in its season, and whose leaves also shall not wither, and whosoever he and and whatever he does, he shall prosper. Now he talks about the ungodly here. He said, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which are the waste, which when wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen? Amen. So these trees that are ungodly shall die. Amen? Amen. And they did. Okay? They did. Now Many times he talks about the trees, even whenever there was a blind man that was being healed, when he looked up for the first time, he said, I see men who look like trees are walking. And so there's so many references about trees. Now, when we talk about here, he says, he says the trees of the Lord are full of sap. Now, there's nothing in the scripture that God wastes. Amen? Everything is applicable for us today. And when he's talking about here, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, what I see today is the trees of the Lord should be full of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen? If we're trees of the Lord, then we have the Spirit of God dwells inside of us. When we were born again, when we asked Jesus to come into our life, that Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You can't separate the Trinity. Amen? The Holy Spirit of God dwells inside of us. When we asked Jesus to come into our life, the moment we asked Him, the Holy Spirit came in. Amen? Now, there are people today that run around from revival to revival, from church to church, looking for more spirit. 
Here's the reality. You have all the spirits you need. The truth is, the Spirit of God is looking for you. Come on, somebody. That was a good time to say amen. Because, see, God gives us all that we need. Are we all that we are to Him? Amen? Now, when we talk about the Spirit here, let's look at some Scripture here, what it says. It says over in um, Romans 8, verse 9, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, he is not his. Amen? And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, he who raises Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Amen? Now, 1 Corinthians says this, Do you not know? that you're the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Amen? Now, some of us are building our temple a little larger to hold more spirit, right? That's a good word for me to believe, amen? I'm running with that one. Now, the Spirit of God dwells inside. Now, when we see this thing here, we must understand... <clears throat> I don't blow my nose in the mic. I'll be going, oh, my God. But the same spirit that dwells inside of you is the same spirit that when Moses stood on the mountaintop, he held out a rod and he split the Red Sea. The same spirit that when they needed food, they fed 5,000 with a couple pieces of bread and some fish. The same spirit that did all these things, that raised lights from the dead, opened the blind eyes, caused the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. Now, what are you going to do with that? Because, see, the trees of the Lord are full of the Spirit. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. Amen? Amen? Now, quit being a sap sucker and do something about it. Amen? Because we can suck all the sap out the room, or we can let the Spirit of God rise up inside of us and do some mighty things for the kingdom of God. Now, this is what this tree biologist, biologist said. Now, this is not my words. This is his words. But I'm going to take his words and I'm going to show you some things that I believe God wants to show us today. Okay? This is the first thing he said. He talked about the sap. He said, sap heals scars. That's good, isn't it? He said, sap heals scars or wounds. Now, when I saw that, I went back and I, I began to look through my scriptures and I seen what Paul said in Galatians 6.17. He says, I bear in my body scars from my service to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? If you're in this room today, and if you're doing anything for the kingdom of God, you're going to have scars. You're going to have wounds. See, there's all kind of trees out there, okay? There's big trees, there's little trees. There's pretty trees, and there's not so pretty trees, amen? There's all kind of trees out there, right? Okay? And so he's telling us here, and it's really amazing, because what he says here, and his biologist is saying this, he said the sap brings healing to the scars. He heals the scars. Now, scars come from many di different directions and many things, okay? Now, the first thing here he says is sap heals wounds caused by pest. There's some pest out there, amen? There's some pest that can get underneath the skin or underneath the bark, so to speak, you know? There's little bugs that kind of get underneath the bark that can destroy the pest. Now, I thought immediately when I read this, I thought of the scripture, and I read this many times, and I talked about this many times, how whenever even the, the, the shepherd said, I anoint the sheep's head with oil, okay? Now, we know he did that for a reason, all right? He would anoint the sheep's head with oil because sometimes bugs would try to get in on the nose of the sheep, and the shepherd would anoint his head with oil so the bugs couldn't get in and lay eggs and, and begin to hatch and cause all kind of damage because sheep are not the brightest thing in the world, yeah. Amen? Because, see, sometimes bugs lands on the sheep, and the sheep will literally take his hoof and begin to beat himself to death. So the shepherd would anoint the sheep's head with oil to keep the bugs from hatching or laying or even staying. And so, really, when we're under the anointing of God and we're full of sap, so to speak, those bugs, those pests, when they do come, they just kind of slide right off. Because they will come. If you're in this room today, I promise you, at some level of life, Somewhere along the way, you have scars. You've been wounded somewhere along the way. And if we are going to allow those wounds to heal, those scars to heal that's caused by pests, then we need to allow our trees to be full of sap. 
We need to say, God, I need more today. See, many times when things happen, maybe there's a part of the tree that this pest got into and began to try to kill that part of the tree. The rest of the tree is screaming, bring in the sap. Bring up the sap. Send the sap up here. Amen? And see, when you're full of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of God and the Spirit of God, when wounds take place in, a, in your life, the Spirit of God will rise up and says, don't worry, I've got the healing coming. Don't worry, I'm going to take care of that situation. Don't worry, everything's going to be okay. That's when we're full of the sap of God. Amen? Amen. Now, let me talk about this for a second, because everything I saw in here, I pulled out and I began to find scriptures. Now, this is the passage when he's talking about tithes and offering. All right? And he's talking to him, and he's talking about what, you know, why this is happening and all this kind of stuff. And he says, because you're not tithing, is what the Scripture talks about. In Malachi 3, verse 11, this is what he says, if you do these things. You do these things, I will rebuke, what, the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fare, so, oh, so, I'm sorry, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you'll be delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen? Now, again, he's, he's right here, he's sending these things to help the devour, to destroy the devour that we need in our life. Amen? Amen. Let's look here. Boy, I don't know why I did this. Sometimes I walk up here and I have my pages all messed up. I want you to see this one right here. Okay, here we go again. The same thing we're talking about healing the scars, okay? How the sap heals the scar. One of the places that the, the scars cause, sap heals the scars caused by pollution. All right? We talked about healing scars caused by pests. This one heals scars caused by pollution. Pollution could be sin. Okay? There's a lot of pollution out there in the world. There's pollution in some of the things we listen to. Hello, somebody. There's pollution in some of the things we watch on TV. There's all kind of sinful pollution out there. And we should allow these, listen. Whenever this pollution sets in, what, what happens is sometimes we, we, we get healed, and the minute we get saved, we have all this, we're full of sap. We're full of the power of God. And all of a sudden, when something happens, we immediately know it's wrong, and we call sin, sin right? Yeah. But what happens after a period of time, pollution sets in, and it begins to undermine or, delittle or belittle sin in our life. I'm talking to somebody. Right. See, if you go to the courthouse here in town, Every time I go, it never fails. I walk in, and you got to go through these detectors, right? I take out my keys, I pull my cell phone, I lay it all out, and it never fails. Every time I walk through, the thing goes off. Now, the guy knows me, and so he says, go on through, Pastor, I'll let you through, because he knows I'm not carrying anything. But the thing goes off for whatever reason. You know what happens to us many times in our life? We have these detectors in our life, and all of a sudden we sin, and these things go off, and it warns us that we have sin in our life, but we let pollution come in, and we reset the sensors. And we begin to pull down the sensors so now we can go through the, the detector and the sensor don't go off. We need that sap to heal the scars caused by this pollution. Here's the next thing. He talked about how the sap heals the scars caused by pruning. You know we all need to be pruned sometime. Recently, I bought a house that has a big fig tree out back. And when I first bought it, I looked and I saw this massive fig tree. I mean, this thing is huge. But I realized when the figs came, there was only so many figs and so many branches. A lot of that stuff was just dead. So I went out there and I began to prune back some of those branches. And this year, when the figs came, they were plentiful. Okay? So sometimes in our life, we need to be pruned. Sometimes there are things in our life that need to be cut off in our life so we can produce more fruit. Now, what that is, I don't know. I can sit here and name all kinds of things we need to prune out of our life. Amen? We might need to prune some relationships, some entertainment, some places we go, things we see. Sometimes we need to prune things in our life so God can get the fullness of the sap, and we could be trees full of sap. My prayer today is, God, if there's something in my life that is not giving you glory, cut it off. Amen. Remove it. Now, you see, when I went out there and began to prune this fig tree, 
I didn't hear the fig tree scream at me. I didn't hear it say, no, not that limb. No, don't cut me here. Please, not go cut the other one. Look at that apple tree. It needs pruning. I didn't hear that. I wish I did. But I will tell you today that in our life, when we get pruned, it hurts. It hurts. I don't like it. Because, you see, pruning takes place when we're at a place in our life that we think that we're okay. You ever got to a place where you think you're okay? You know? And all of a sudden, God shows you some things different. Because, see, by saying we're okay, we just totally desensitize all those other things in our life. Here's the next thing I thought was kind of interesting is what he said. He said, sap helps hold and gives strength to the trees. Now, let me just say this about trees. And he was talking about the size of the tree. He said this. He said, just because a tree is large don't mean it's stronger. Because a lot of times you'll see big trees that have dead limbs at the top. We call them widow makers. And probably what that tree is saying is sending some sap up here, but it's so big and maybe got too big for his britches, so to speak, until the sap can't get up to the head. Amen? Man, I'm talking to somebody. Sometimes i got to close my eyes because I want to... Because sometimes I, I see when it hits you, and I, you go... Like, he just pruned me. Just, just cut off a limb there for a moment there, man. <laughs> but it gives us strength. You see, sometimes we think because we're big in the church or big in the world or big or whatever, we're stronger than other people. But here's the reality. When the storm comes, you see the big ones fall. It's those little green ones that just go all the way to the ground and just pops right back up. Amen? They're so full of sap until you can bend them all the way to the ground and let them go. And they go, bang, right back up. What's interesting was even some scientists got together, and you've heard this before, where they built this, I guess they call it a, a sphere. Is that right? Biosphere. Biosphere, whatever it was. This huge glass dome in the desert. And they set this perfect atmosphere. The conditions were absolutely perfect. But all of a sudden they noticed, I guess whenever some winds or turned some... And when we would do that, the trees would just fall flat. Because see, they never had any chance to go through any storms. You see, if we're going to be a strong tree full of sap, we're going to go through some storms. Every one of us will go through a storm. And I thought about how the scripture even says that if you are serving God, you're going to suffer persecution. If you're going to do the right things for God, you're going to suffer persecution. You're going to go through a storm. But every time you go through a storm, that's going to make you stronger than ever before. Amen? We need that strength in our life. We need to know that when we go through those storms, that God's going to give us the strength so we can stand firm and we're not going to fall flat on our face. Because they do come. Amen? Storms happen. Now here's the next thing. He said, sap produces fruit. Now, my question today, if his trees and large trees are full of sap, all the trees should be producing fruit. Are you producing fruit? Now, Trish, this is one of your favorite scriptures and mine too. Proverbs 11.30. It says, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. See, a tree that's producing fruit is winning souls. Amen? Where is, is Wendy in here? I know she started coming. Is she in the back helping? Wendy? Oh, there she is. I don't even know her that well, but I tell you what, she is producing some souls in this church. I mean, every time I turn around, she's bringing a family in here. And it's almost like she don't even give them a chance to say no. No, you come with me and drags them in here. Amen? <laughs> now, see, to me, that's exciting. I love that. Amen? Because, see, all of us should be winning. Because we all should say, listen, God's doing something in our life. Listen, I'm being fed by the Spirit of God. Come go with, with me. Amen? Yeah. Instead of saying, listen, I'm going to the, to the nightclub, and there's a good band playing. Come go with. Amen? A man that's winning souls is wise. And so producing fruit means we're full of sap. Amen? Now, I read this scripture here, and it's one that we find in Matthew 21. 
And really, this is kind of referring to, I guess, us kind of drying up or running low on our sap. Amen? He's talking about the fig tree here, Matthew 21, 18. He says, Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And he said to it, Let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did this fig tree wither away so soon? You know, when I wrote that, I mean, when I read that, I wrote something next to it. And this is what I wrote. I said, how many times have we seen brothers and sisters in the church that we think are so full of sap, and all of a sudden, they're gone one Sunday, they go on two Sundays. Next thing you know, they're gone forever. And they're out of the kingdom of God, or they're out of God's will, or they're just running from God. They withered away. And he's saying here, he's, how did this fig tree wither away so soon? And see, that's a sad reality. It really is. Because yeah. see, when you see people who, who kind of fall out or kind of are scarred or wounded, and for whatever reason, they don't have enough sap to heal that scar or heal that wound. All of a sudden, they quit producing fruit. And next thing you know, they disappear. It's a sad reality that we face in the church. And as a pastor of this church, going on my 17th year, it's one that I don't like very much. And it's sad because so many I've seen doing things for the kingdom of God, stand in this pulpit, speak give testimony of how great God is, and now you can't even find him. God help us. So Jesus answered and said to him, Surely I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you would not only do what was done to this fig tree, but also you'll say to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. It will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believe and you will receive. Now, this is my question today, and I'm going to, this is a short message today, and I'm going to sum it up pretty quick here in just a moment because in the very beginning I read the scripture when it says the Lord's trees are full of sap and I know for many reasons we just get dry we get dry as I talked about before those pests I talked about how pollution I talked about how pruning you know sometimes those little bitty sap suckers grow on you or those things that grow on you and they need to be pruned in your life, and they drain you dry. But this morning, I want to believe today that when we leave this place, every tree of the Lord will be full of his sap. Every tree of the Lord will be full of the Holy Ghost and the power of God and operate under the power of God. And I'm going to answer some questions here in just a moment. I'm going to hit this. And I want you to know something before I even get started. What I'm about to speak about, or what we need to fill us with sap, it's not complicated. And it's very elementary. Because many times there are people who want this deep revelation. Oh, give me some deep revelation, Pastor. Give me this deep revelation. And the reality is, is they hadn't got the elementary things of God yet. They're crying out for some deep revelation and they ain't got the simple things yet. And so this morning, what I'm about to talk about and how do we receive the sap of God and how we get full of the sap of God are very simple. And the first one is simply this. How do we maintain and how we begin to be full of God and full of the sap of God? We need to spend time with the sap maker. When's the last time you spent time with the sap maker? We find a scripture here, and Jesus, who is fixing to be crucified and fixing to be betrayed, and all of a sudden he's got these guys with him who's disciple, and they've seen the blind walk, and they've seen the deaf hear, and they've seen all these things happen, and now he's in the garden, and he's crying out, and he said, he, then he came to a place where they named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him. And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. And he said, Stay here and watch. He's asking him just to spend some time with God. Just stay here for a moment. And he went a little further and he fell on the ground and he prayed that it was possible that the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Don't you realize the hour's come? 
Can't you spend a little time with me? Can't your tree be full of sap? Because when trouble comes, you'll be able to heal the wounds. Couldn't you just stay here a little while longer? Then he says, could you not watch one hour? Verse 38, he says, watch and pray, at least you enter temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and he prayed and he spoke some same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to answer him. Can you imagine the king of kings telling you, listen, just spend a little time, just spend a little time praying to the Father. And all of a sudden he walks away and you fall on your face and you fast asleep. Then he came to him the third time and he said to him, are you still sleeping and resting? Is it an... It is enough, he said, the hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See my betrayers at hand. We know the story because as soon as the betrayer showed up, as soon as the soldier showed up, Peter, who should have been awake and spending time, his sap was a little low, so he reached out a sword. Come on, somebody. See, we reach for those things of the flesh because that's what we think we are. Instead of being full of sap and full of the power of anointing of God, instead of reaching for the anointing of God and spending time and just, just being rejuvenated, full of sap, we reach for the earthly things, which he did. If we're going to be full of sap, we need to spend time with the Father. Here's the next one, just so easy, so simple, so elementary. If we're going to be full of sap and we spend time with the sap maker, we need to keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. The Bible says, ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it'll be opened to you. When's the last time you asked? When's the last time you seeked? When's the last time you knocked? Now, I know the Father knows what we want, but how many times if you had your child, and you know the child wanted, and you said, just, just ask, or ask the baby, just, just ask the Father. Ask me what you want. Just tell me what you want. Say Give me the bottle, so to speak. See, sometimes he just wants us to ask. He wants us to seek. He wants us to knock. And this is what he said in this, this passage here. He says this. For everyone who asks, receives, and who seeks, finds. He knocks, will be open. And he goes on to say, what a man is there among you? His son asked for bread, he'd give him a stone. If he asked for a fish, he'd give him a serpent. If, if you then be an evil, he says, if you then be evil earthly, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will you father? Who's in heaven give good, good things to those who ask him? You see, is it that difficult for us to spend a little time with the Father? Is it that difficult to ask, to seek, and to knock? Lay our requests before the Father's feet. You know, I, I said this the other day, and I said it in a joking way. When you pray, be specific on how you pray. Just pray for what, look, if you're praying for a pair of shoes, ask God for the right size. Now, I know that sounds silly, but we need to find that time when we begin to fall on our face and we cry out and we begin to spell out those things. God, I, I'm asking. God, my wife and I are going through some difficulties. God, I need you to show up. God, I need your healing grace. God, my, my children are going through some difficulties. My son, my daughter, God, I need you. I need you to show up and begin to call out their name and begin to ask the Father. And I love the way he says this. He says, listen, if an earthly father loves his children and I love mine, how much more does a heavenly father love us? By just spending time with him. You know, one of the hardest things for me right now is my father lives three and a half hours away from us. And 14 years, he lived right next door to me. And every time... I wanted to talk to him. I just walked next door. And I'd go sit down. I'd just spend time with my dad. Because I love him and he loves me. And no matter what I was dealing with, no matter what I was facing, no matter what I said to him, he always gave me words of encouragement. And so now, him being so far away is so difficult to go. If I get a chance to see him once or twice a month, that's hard. It's really hard. But can I tell you something? Your father lives right next door. Amen. And all he's asking for you is to come over and spend a little time. Amen. Well, I, I'm, I'm playing this game. As soon as I finish this game. I'm watching this movie. As soon as I'm finished watching this movie. Cat's in a cradle and a silver spoon. <laughs> little boy in the 
Man on the Moon, When are You Coming Home, I Don't Know When, But We'll Get Together Then. Some of you young kids don't even know that song. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Spending time with the Father, asking the Father, laying requests before the Father. And the last time is simply pray without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Spend, spend time. Pray. Listen, I don't care what I'm doing. I could be hammering. I could be sawing. I could be doing something. Even as I preach on Sunday morning, I'm praying. I'm spending time with the Father. I pray without ceasing. Listen, lay your request. Look, if you're driving down the road, watch and pray. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> but you can, you can pray. You can pray while you drive. Pray without ceasing. This morning, I believe that God's trees need to be full of sap. I thought about this earlier, and I told you the story about how I saw the tree that was dead and I knocked it down and it fell on a power line and it took out three of the homes. Power. You know what's really funny about that? <laughs> if you live in one of the houses, it wasn't funny at all. <laughs> she laughed because she was on the house next door and the power came from the other direction. <laughs> Everybody went to her house. <laughs> But what's really strange and, and really hard about that, and I thought about this, is if we're not full of sap, then we're dead. And if we fall, we take out two or three people with us. And the sad reality is it don't take much to knock out the power. Come on. Don't be that tree that falls and take out the power. Father, I thank you this morning. For your word. God, I thank you that, God, you, you said that your trees, the Lord's trees are full of sap. God, maybe there's some people today for whatever reason, they've been wounded, maybe because of pest, pollution, God, maybe because of pruning. God, for whatever reason, their tree is not full of sap. And God, I pray today that you'll begin to fill every heart in this place with your anointing power. God, I pray for the Holy Spirit of power that dwells inside of us to be full today. God, I, I give you myself today. God, as I was talking about earlier, has people chasing, trying to chase the Spirit. And God, the reality is the Spirit is there. We just need to give up ourselves to you. God, I want to give up myself to you. And God, maybe there's people today for many reasons. Say, Pastor, I realize today that I am not full of sap because I have not given myself totally to Christ in some ways in my life. And I don't need to generically name them off. I don't really need to know what they are. But maybe you're here today and for whatever reason you say, Pastor, I just need to be full of sap. I need to be full of the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I'm lacking in that area of my life. Would you pray for me this morning? Would you pray that I'll become full of what God has for me today? Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. I'm not going to embarrass you, I'm not going to call you out. I just want to pray for you. I just want to pray God's anointing upon you, God's spirit upon you, and that you become full of the things of God today. If that's you this morning and you need prayer today, just raise your hand and put it back down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I see those hands. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'll give you an opportunity. I just want to pray for you. I see those hands. See that hand. I see that hand. Anyone else? I see that hand, sister. Anyone else? Just want to pray for you. Just want to take a moment. Anybody else? Pray for me, Pastor. I see that hand. Pray for me, Pastor. Don't miss an opportunity. Pray for me, Pastor. I see that hand. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I see that hand. Anyone else? I see that hand. Anyone else? just want to pray for you. I don't want to belong the service. If you need prayer this morning, just raise your hand and put it back down. I see that hand. 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 God's doing something this morning. He's stirring your spirit. I just want to pray for you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. I see that hand.
Anyone else? Last call. just want to pray for you. Don't miss an opportunity. I see that hand. I see that hand. Father, I pray this morning. Got hands all over this sanctuary. God, you know where the trees of the Lord need. God, this morning I pray that we're all full of the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that the Spirit that dwells inside of us as believers will rise up. God, I pray that we'll begin to be overcomers. God, I pray that we'll begin to heal those places in our life that scars, pests, pollution, pruning. God, give your tree strength. Give us the capability to overcome. Give us the capability to be stronger than ever before. God, when the storms come, and we know they will, God, let your trees be full of sap. Instead of being broken, let them bounce right back. Father, I thank you this morning for hands all over this place. God, you're doing something. God, I pray today that you'll just have your way in every heart, every hand, every situation. Father, I thank you today for your healing grace. Thank you for all that you've done. God, I thank you for what you're about to do. Blessings be upon it. Maybe there's some today that felt so weak they couldn't even raise their hand. God, I pray that you touch them. Let your grace be upon them. Fill them with your presence. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you're here this morning you say, Pastor... I never asked Jesus into my life. I never invited Him in my heart. I don't know what it is to have the Spirit of God in my life. Or maybe you hear this morning, you say, Pastor, there was a time I was serving the Lord. I'm just backslidden. I've been running. And I want to get that right today also. Right there in your seat, from the heart, begin to pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my life today. Jesus, I repent. Jesus, I want to make you Lord and Savior. Jesus, you're my King, my Lord, my Savior. Jesus, save me. Save me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Again, I'm not going to call you out or embarrass you. Just want to pray for you. Maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe it's a prayer rededication. If you prayed that prayer this morning, where are you at? Just slip up your hand and put it back down. Thank you, Jesus. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for saving souls. God, I thank you for your sweet anointing. And God, I thank you for your salvation that's so rich and free. Blessings be upon this day, this time together. Blessings be upon all these things we pray. We thank you. We honor you. We worship you. We pray these things in the powerful, holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you receive that word, let's give God a hand. Amen.